I always thought I was such a good person because I grew up in a good home. I was kind of considered a goody two-shoes, like pretty much obeyed mom and dad, whatever they wanted. And I thought, oh, I'm, gosh, I, God, I believe in you, but I didn't really know why I needed you. And it wasn't until I saw myself as a sinner that I realized what he did for me. Every time you come on to Takeaways, we ask people what they really want to know. And, and inevitably, people want to know the story of your faith. How did you come to follow Jesus? Well, as you already know, we didn't grow up in a Christian home, uh, but mom was always a believer. And it was at 12 years old, we went to church for the first time because mom and dad were thinking of getting a divorce and a friend had invited them to church. So I remember I went to church um, and it was all like so new and we kept going and I didn't really know what the pastor was talking about, but I just liked how I felt in church. Mm -hmm. I liked hearing what I was hearing, even if I didn't understand it. And so I remember at 12 years old in a service, the pastor had said, hey, bow your head and, and say this prayer if you wanna receive Jesus into your heart, which was a sinner's prayer, and I did. And I accepted Jesus into my heart. And so I truly believe I was saved from that day forward. But, but my, my life, I, as I got older and into my teenage years, I wasn't walking with God. I wasn't mm. reading my Bible. I'd go to youth group every once in a while and church occasionally, but I certainly didn't really understand the gospel message. And so it was in my early 20s after I had my daughter, Natasha, mm -hmm. around 22, 23, I started- So this was after Full House. Yeah, after Full House. I started thinking, what do I wanna teach my kids about God? And then that got me thinking about my relationship with God. And I, I thought, well, I, don't, I actually don't really know. I, I know I believe in Jesus. Yeah. I know that he's my savior, but I don't really know what that means. And, and I realized I, I've never read the Bible before. And so how can I teach my kids about God if I don't really know about God? And, and then I had this, you know, like kind of cool brother that- um, Very cool. <laughs> that called me one time and said like, hey, I'm sending you this book that's rocked my world. And I really hope that you'll read it. So you, you sent me... Uh, the, Was it Revival's Golden Key? Yes, you sent me Revival's Golden Key. Yeah. That's right. And I read that book and it rocked my world because I always thought I was such a good person because I grew up in a good home. I was kind of considered a goody two-shoes, like pretty much obeyed mom and dad, whatever they wanted. I'd, you know call if I was going to be late. I wouldn't stay out past curfew. You know, I did all the right things. I didn't, I didn't do drugs. I wasn't, you know, going down a crazy path like a lot of child stars go down. So I always thought I'm such a good person. And Jesus saves us from our sin, you know, reconciles us from our sin. But I didn't really think I was a sinner. So right. I'm like, I'm a really good person compared to a lot of other people my age. And it wasn't until I read Revival's Golden Key that... I was told, well, put God's law in, in front of you and ask, have I, have I ever broken God's standard of what is right and good? Mm. And so, you know, it's like, have you ever told a lie? Uh, yeah. Have you um, always put God first in your life? No. I mean, and those are just like the easy ones. Right. And then, and then read that, well, if you break even one commandment, it's as if you're breaking all of them. Mm. So I was, I was then realized for the first time in my life, oh, I am a sinner. Even though I'm good by the world standard, I'm not good by God's standard. He holds a much higher standard mm. than the world. And so I kind of freaked out. I'm like, what? Okay, now what? What am I supposed to do with yeah. that? I'm not. I'm I not a good person. Uh, yeah. I, 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 but then I was 
again, told the gospel message, but that's why Jesus came to pay that penalty right. for my sin. And that even though I'm not good by God's standard, God is, and he's taken the punishment for me. And it was like, oh, the light bulb went off. And I thought, God, I believe in you, but I didn't really know why I needed you. And it wasn't until I saw myself as a sinner that I realized what he did for me. Mm. And that changed everything. And that, I, I believe I've been a Christian since I was 12, but I didn't start walking with God until I was about 22 or 23 years old. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing to me that it was the, it was the moment that you saw your sin that actually unlocked the door for you to be able to appreciate the gospel. Yes, exactly. And so many people say, well, no, 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 only talk to people about the love of God. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you, he loves yeah. you. But in reality, uh, that can almost blind people to their, their need for a savior. Mm -hmm. And it's the mirror of God's law that shows us that, wow, I'm in desperate need of his forgiveness and an overhaul of my heart. And that's the preciousness of the gospel and mm -hmm. what Jesus did for me. Yeah. That's so awesome, Candace. And that makes me so grateful as your, big, as your big brother because so many people can go through their entire life going to church and never receive the gift that you've received mm -hmm. of just like that light yeah. goes off like that. And that's yeah. so great. I'm very um, grateful you sent me that book. Oh, I'm so grateful that Ray Comfort wrote it uh, because it's, um, you know, it's, it's about not only national revival, a worldwide revival, but it starts with a personal revival. And uh, I'm so glad that, that, that we've, we've experienced that. Uh, Candace, how, how has your faith impacted your career? It's impacted it greatly. Uh, one, because it really has been my beacon of light in all the decisions that I've made in my mm -hmm, career. Mm -hmm. It's been my guiding light um, as to what projects I choose. Could have done lots of other things over the years in, in entertainment and had offers to do other things. Maybe not bad things, but just things that I, I realized, like, I don't know if that would be honoring to God, or I don't know if I'd be comfortable for my kids to watch that, or even my parents, or, yeah. you know, all those kinds of things. And I know that's because of the Holy Spirit in me and just God's guidance. So that, that part, um, the way I've, I've intentionally walked through my career is based on my faith. Um, my faith is always, has also given me opportunities that um, I didn't think I would ever have, like being a co-host on The View. I wasn't really asking for that job at the time. I didn't really think about mm. it. They actually came to me because I was unashamed about speaking about my faith. And yeah. so I was like, wow. okay, this is an opportunity. I'm really scared, but clearly God opened this door. I'll go for it. Yeah. So it's... Um, yeah, I am That's the cool. woman I am today and have all the opportunity I have today and been through all the things because of my faith. 